This time I was trying to tape a short video, um, one that could go on Google or on YouTube Shorts. But then I came to think to myself that if something's worth filming, it's also worth explaining. And I was at the range with my uh, with my buddy the other day, and we noticed whilst filming for the Zeiss LRP S5 5 to 25 by 56. We were taping some slow motion video of the of the rifle and noticed that the barrel um, was very obviously moving. And I've noticed this before and haven't really thought any more of it because it hasn't affected the accuracy of the rifle. And that got me thinking that I would make an explainer. Um, because I, th I feel that there are a lot of myths and a lot of misconceptions around the barrel movement, uh, aspect of shooting. All barrels move. Um, there are no barrels at all, or bar none, that do not move when fired. The question is how much they move. And if the movement is unison for every shot that's fired. If the shots that are fired are, and the harmonics in the rifle and the barrel are the same for each shot, then the accuracy of the rifle will not be affected. <clears throat> On the other hand, if you have an action and a barrel that where the harmonics are not the same each time, then that will affect the accuracy of the rifle. That's also why it's so important that your load and your speed and your um, set depth of your, of your ammunition is so important because all of these factors have a direct effect on how the barrel leaves your, or how the projectile leaves your barrel and how the barrel moves when the projectile, in this case represented by this piece of wood, moves throughout the barrel and out of the muzzle. When the barrel moves, then the projectile, of course, moves in one or the other direction. I think we'll just go over to the bench to show, and this time I'll be using an AR because it's a lot easier to move, move around and, and maneuver. So let's move over to the bench. Okay, this is an AR. The weapon is cleared and safe. Magazine is out, just to be sure. So, now, as I said, this is an AR. And the only reason why I'm using an AR for this is for basically instructional purposes. I have also modified a projectile so that it becomes a whole lot longer than a regular normal projectile. Because, and this is also a 375 Shatek projectile, this is not a 308 as the uh, AR-10 is chambered in, but for instructional purposes this will work just fine. When the barrel of the gun is attached to the action, <clears throat> Of course, this projectile will travel from the action, or from the bullet, or casing, out through the barrel and leave at the muzzle. What happens is, if your barrel shifts either one way or the other way, now I'm just using, or I'm moving the entire front action because that's easiest for me to do. When and if the barrel, and I maybe, yeah, I can even show you how you can push the barrel around. The gun is stationary, but you can actually maneuver the barrel around inside the action, or inside the handguard. If the barrel moves up 
upon firing. Then of course your bullet will also leave the barrel at the muzzle when it's at one or the other position. If it's down when the bullet leaves the barrel, then it will leave at a different position. If it's to the side, one or the other, then this will be the same. And no matter where the bullet leaves the barrel, it will travel in the same fashion. As long as your powder and your speed and your set depth and everything else is the same, then no matter where the barrel is, the projectile will act in the same way. It will spin out through the barrel and come out the muzzle. No matter where the bullet or the barrel is, when the bullet leaves the action or the uh, the barrel, then the projectile, as long as it's the same movement and the harmonics of the barrel are the same for each shot, then the bullet will also move out of the barrel the same way each time. <clears throat> and of course, this is why Eric Cortina and the others have made the EC tuner and the, the barrel tuners as we, as we are so accustomed to now is because that then you can change the harmonics of your barrel. That's practical when you're a hand loader and you're trying to get that really, really tight squeeze sub quarter sub eighth MOA grouping at a hundred yards. If you're shooting, um, if you're shooting factory ammo, it will also improve somewhat your, your performance of your barrel. And the reason why it can change the performance of your grouping is because if your barrel has a tendency to be different places when the bullet leaves the bore, then you're going to have a grouping that's all over the place. If your barrel has the same harmonics every time, then your bullet is also going to leave the barrel at the same point every time with the same speed, with the same height or width or whatever, wherever the barrel is, then the bullet will leave at the same point. Whilst we were out shooting this video for the, uh, the Zeiss LRPS5, one of the reviews that we're doing on the uh, high-end scope market, um, as I said, a buddy of mine, we noticed that the barrel of the uh, 338 Lapua that we're using to film all these different scopes, um, it was moving quite a bit. And I've noticed this before, that it moved. I haven't ever really given it much thought because the grouping of that rifle is its superb. It's really, really good. It's a 36-inch German Lotovelo uh, barrel. And the longer your barrel is going to get, or the longer your barrel gets, then the more movements there's going to be and the more obvious movements there are going to be in the barrel. The shorter the barrel gets, the less movement there's going to be. I haven't done any fancy pants harmonics measurement on the barrels. Um, I just, I know this um, to be true because I've tested and tested and tested and tested. Um, <clears throat> The shorter barrels, of course, suffer from the same um, from the same fate as the longer barrels. It's just harder to change with the shorter barrels. I mean, the harmonics of a shorter piece of metal will, of course, be harder to change because it's stiffer. the The long thirty six inch barrel I have on that uh, three three eight Lapua. Um, I can I can move that all over just by just by pressing it and and this 16 inch barrel on on this is this AR you can see that we can still manipulate the the steel of the barrel up and down um, and 
as I said, as long as this movement is the same every time, it's not a problem. And that, of course, also means that if you do have a barrel that's moving <clears throat> and you cannot get that perfect sub quarter, sub eighth MOA that you want on your paper on at, at 100 yards, then you can do one of four things. You can look at your set depth which is how far down your your um, casing your bullet is set and how far away from the from the crown or from the not the crown sorry from the ogive you are so that you either go closer or pull it further back to get a better group the other thing you can look at is, do I have consistency in my load? Is my, um, are my speeds the same? Is my SD and my e, uh, ES, is that the same over a broad range of these, uh, of the bullets that I'm using or the ammunition that I'm using? Um, the third thing you can do is that you can look at your, your weight your grain weight and the barrel twist. I can, I can cover this in a different video if, if you guys so wish. Um, twist rates and barrel or, and, and, and projectile weights are <clears throat> co entwined so intensely that it's, it's stupid. I mean, you, you can, you can get a, a super, super, super crisp, super precise rifle to shoot like a dog if you put the wrong grain projectile in there. And the fourth thing you can do is that you can look at the barrel harmonics. I mean, you, you can you can get one of these here EC tuners um, and try and see if you can change the harmonics of your, of your barrel so that the <clears throat> point of departure from the muzzle can be brought back in to as close as possible to the same spot every time. So in conclusion, um, at the, the bench, we've been looking at how the barrel moves and how the projectile leaves the barrel. Um, <clears throat> if you do have problems with groupings on your long rifle, um, and I'm not talking a AR style rifle. I am talking one of the long, long rifles that you use for, and just to be clear, rifle is clear and we're safe. So if you do have one of the long rifles, that you use for for ERL or long range shooting, then the barrel movement up and down of the barrel that you can see in that short video clip that we have, that will have a great effect on the way your rifle performs. If the speed of your bullet changes, the harmonics of the of the barrel changes. And if the harmonics of the barrel changes between shots, then your impact's going to change between shots. At 100 yards, that can mean the difference between a sub-quarter MOA group or a sub-1 MOA group. At a mile, or at two miles, that can mean the difference between um, a yard, two yards, three yards, either next to the target, to either side, in front of the target or behind the target and that can be extremely frustrating um, for for shooters that you don't know why your ammunition is is acting weird it could also be down to temperature but that's something that i'm also going to cover in a different video at some point um, we've done some testing with 
um, heating up ammunition, freezing ammunition, and the differences in speed there were on on the ammunition when heated up and frozen. Um, I think we're also going to do a video on that at some point when we're done with all this um, scope business. And I think that was it for uh, for barrel movement. If you guys have any questions, be don't be afraid to, to leave those questions in the comment section. I'll try and, and answer as many as I can. Um, if you feel, again, that I deserve it, please uh, like, share, and subscribe. That will help me greatly. Um, I'm trying to build the, this channel as much as I can. And on behalf of ELR Long Range, I bid you stay tuned and stay safe.